Good afternoon campers, we're back out in the Australian bush and today we wanted to share a special recipe with you on how you can make cheese while you're camped in the wilderness. All you need is two simple ingredients, just milk and vinegar. In the meantime, let's swing around and have a look at the campsite. Today we are using also the esky as a guy line, so this is something you wouldn't do in summer. If it was summertime, you would want the esky underneath the car in the shade. Over here. Christina's just finished making some dough for her raisin bread that she's going to be making. Bread, 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 bread. Raisin bread. In the campfire, we have already some whole wheat bread baking in the camp oven. Let's just move that in a little bit closer for you. Just to keep the heat going. And over here, is the special treat we have this afternoon, ricotta cheese in the process. Right now we have half a litre of milk simmering, or almost simmering. So I believe that's 16 fluid ounces of milk. And we have one tablespoon of vinegar. And over here, this is our cheese straining system, our version of cheesecloth, just an old cotton t-shirt that we've cut out and put out on top of the Snow Peak Titanium Pot. And this ricotta cheese recipe comes thanks to my friend Gavin Weber, professional cheese making YouTuber. Check out his channel, link in the description. In the meantime, let's have a look at the car from this angle. A couple of guy lines also tied onto the bull bar there. That's just to hold the tarp system back and stop it from moving too far backwards. One new idea we came up with recently for this uh, car camping system is we now have a woolen blanket fully covering the back. So the back rear window is now permanently locked closed. There's our bed inside and the woolen blanket helps to block out the wind, blocks out the mosquitoes, blocks out the sunlight and it's really hot in there now. Look. The woolen blanket has really increased the temperature rating on the sleep system. Let's just step over to the ricotta cheese and see how she's going. Just have to keep a close eye on this milk, we don't want it to burn. Probably just turn the heat up a little bit on the butane burner. So I'll switch the camera off now, we'll come back in a few minutes once the milk has simmered. Back again campers. And the milk is just about to boil. So we don't want to boil it quite. We want to, once it reaches about 90 degrees, to slowly add the tablespoon of vinegar. Gently mix it in. Now I want to now simmer the mixture for, the, for a further two minutes. And I forgot to mention we're also going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. So the salt straight out of one of my little Nalgene containers. So everything right there is ultralight cooking equipment. And we are already curdling, campers. We are already curdling. Hopefully the camera's picking that up, but it's already starting to turn into cheese as we speak. So two minutes on the simmer. Just pop back over here and see what Christina's doing. What are you doing, sweetie? Making our bread. And making bread. Putting some seeds on top of your... Raisin toast? It's no longer raisin toast. It's now raisin toast with a bit of whole grain on it. White flour, cinnamon and a bit of brown sugar. That's what she has in the mix. This is where I was chopping the wood yesterday. Also got my little uh, wood drying set up here. It's just a milk crate with all the uh, logs split, raised up off the ground because it was raining here last night. The weather is pretty full on this weekend that's why we're not backpacking we've decided to camp in the car where it's a bit cozier That milk has now been simmering for over two minutes, so it's time to turn the heat off. 
So we now want to let that sit for a further 10 minutes. And as you, as you can see, we've got a lot of curdles, campers. So in about 10 minutes, once we've cooled down the mixture, we will be straining it through this uh, cotton sheet. Just a piece of cotton sheet over another one of my titanium mugs with a rubber band holding it on the top. Putting your raisin toast in the fire, sweaty. Meantime, the cheese is now ready for straining cambers. Nice and thick, with all those curdles resting on top. So the final step here is just to strain the mixture through your tea towel, or in this case I'm using an old cotton shirt, just a piece that I cut off. Might just tip some of that liquid out onto the ground instead of blocking up my strainer. So we can just let that sit there for about 30 minutes until it's fully strained out. And then we should be left with pure ricotta cheese on top. Just been sp splitting some more logs here, cameras with the old machete. Something you sometimes find when you're in in the Australian bush are these little grubs inside the wood. Perfectly edible, I think, in my opinion. In fact, it resembles a widgety grub. I'm gonna eat him right now, on camera, raw. People often describe the taste of widgety grubs to be quite like nuts. Mm. Not bad at all, not bad. Is the camp oven cooking away? Sometimes I just put my hand on top just to test the temperature. If I can hold my hand there comfortably, that means it's not too hot. Only for a few seconds though, at the moment. It's probably getting a bit too cool. Just take a bit of coals from here. Always just put, pop a bit of air on the fire just to heat it up. Let's see how that cheese is going over here. Ricotta cheese. So what we have right now is a big lump of ricotta on top there. Just keeping the lid on there just so the ash doesn't get in there from the fire. Ricotta cheese on the damper. Mm. <laughs> Another popular recipe for damper is just a bit of honey on top. Yummy. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Mm. Oh, the bread. Cheese. <laughs>